Hey everyone, this is Rahul with the Alternative Investors Hangout, and today we have a returning guest. He hasn't been on in quite some time. He is Don from the YouTube channel Day Trade Show. Don, thanks for coming on again. Thanks for having me, Rahul. Okay, so for the past year or so, it appears that you've been bullish on gold and silver, or you're starting to buy gold and silver while we know there are a lot of popular YouTube channels when it comes to silver and gold, and it just seems that, yeah, they're telling people about stacking and how they're still stacking, but they're not as comfortable as they were in 2011. 2011, everyone was saying stack the smack, but now they're saying stack occasionally. And you're saying, you know what, I want to start buying gold and silver because everyone tends to be more negative or less optimistic than in 2011 when we hit a high. Why are you starting to load the boat compared to a few years ago? What's your thought process behind this? In 2011, there was a a consistent emotional refrain, and it was buy at any price, price doesn't matter, and you're going to destroy the banking system even with the one or two ounces you pick up at your local coin store. This was something which was on a daily basis heard every time silver would drop 25 cents. I mean, there there were literally days it would pull back 25 cents, and you'd see people posting, thank you, Blythe. I mean, you just, I mean, clearly a 25-cent pullback or a dollar pullback or a $5 pullback on something hitting those highs didn't make sense to buy them, much less be emotionally thankful for it. And in 2014... The mantra is still buy. Like, you know, the, the, the people that were telling you to buy in 2011 are still telling you to buy in 2014. But what they're doing now is they're pushing targets lower and lower on where they think the price is going to, quote, bottom at. When every bottom that's been called has fallen through, it's not that the, the gurus are telling people to sell or to get out or whatever. They're just saying they think prices are going to go lower. Now, from my perspective, there were key metrics that had to happen before I wanted to buy. 19 or lower, I've done videos at 19, probably a dozen videos this year. Every time silver would hit 19, I would say, okay, here on down, here's where I'm buying. And so from 19 to 12 is where I see as a buying opportunity, and that's what I'm doing. I'm buying. I, I don't know what else to say about it. The, 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 the folks telling people prices are going lower, they may or may not be correct about that. But the same folks telling people that we're going to see sub-15 were the ones telling people we'd see uh, 150 to 500 back in 2011. And, you know, it's not that these guys are saying don't buy. It's their price targets are coming down. And the stories are now reflecting their uh, – their, I, I don't want to use the word excuse because – you know, they, they would argue they were just reasons, but they're just simply telling people prices are going to go lower. And I'm saying prices have gone lower by 65 percent on silver and gold down almost 800 bucks. Now, if you wait for these gurus to get the bottom, good luck. Good luck. I, I, I'm not going to try to time the bottom. I'm, I'm just doing what I said I would do when everyone else started pushing these targets lower and charts look like they do then I'd want to buy. And by the way, my target of 17 and a half. I mean, I know when you and I first talked about this. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I think it was fairly obvious that you thought 17 and a half was maybe a ridiculous price target. Well, it happened. So what am I supposed to do, Rahul? Am I supposed to not buy when I got the target I wanted? You mentioned some retailers, and I was listening to this one retailer. I'm not going to mention the name. He mentioned that sales were coming down, and you've also mentioned that you know retailers personally where the sales have dropped 90%. So looking at that fact, do you see, number one, major retailers going out of business, and do you think that's some sort of contrary indicator, how you see, you saw all these guys in 2011, they wanted to buy, now no one's buying, retailers are, I mean, all these individuals are saying that, hey, silver went down $1, I don't want to take purchase over the order, and this is what you're saying in another video as well. Well, I think that the people that are going to, well, first off, there are people that have gone out of business. It's very much like comic books in the 90s. In the 90s, when comic books and baseball cards began to take off, a lot of these secondary comic book companies and baseball card uh, sets and companies came out, and the market got flooded. Now, a lot of those guys are gone. In fact, if you look at baseball card and comic book stores, there's not even one-tenth of what there were in the mid-90s still open today. Now, it doesn't mean that comic books have gone away. They're still here. It doesn't mean that there aren't some comic book and baseball card shops. There are. But those lower-level retail guys, they've been washed out. 
And the same is true with the coins. And the same is true with the generic rounds. A lot of the lower level retail guys are getting washed out. A lot of the eBay guys are getting washed out. I mean, there were people, I, I personally know people who were making $100,000 on a good month last year selling retail generic silver on eBay. And now they're closing down their eBay stores. It's, it's not, it doesn't mean that, that there aren't people buying, though. I mean, there is big money buying gold and silver in, in, the, in the large amounts. But the retail guy, the, what I called the urban silver stacker, they're, they're gone. In other words, if you look at the folks who got involved in 2011 and 2012 and even into 13 that were, you know, just people you might have met in the street who heard about crashing banks, those folks are they're gone. They're washed out. Now, what you're left with are the hardcore stackers, and they're never going away. And you've got probably some big money stepping in and picking up some silver and gold. Yep, we shall see what happens with the price of gold and silver in the years to come. But now I wanted to change gears and go into the stock market. It just seems that what happened three years ago in silver, I'm noticing the same thing in the stock market. I see a lot of guys mocking individuals saying, hey, why aren't you buying the stock market? You're dumb if you're not in the stock market right now. And everywhere I go, whether it's at work, whether it's family members, they're feeling optimistic about the market like people felt optimistic about gold and silver. Do you see it the same way with conversations that you've had? Well, first of all, I, I, if you're having conversations with people about the market, you're having a pretty rare conversation these days because the number of – well, unless you travel in the circles that talk about that stuff. Most folks don't talk about the market. Now, from 1998 until 2001, there was a phenomenon of the taxi cab driver giving out stock picks. You know, that everybody was involved in the market in, in, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Well, now nobody cares. Volume across all markets is down. Look at the, the shares of companies like the street.com, whose entire business model is you know, giving advice with respect to stocks. Their stock has been obliterated. And the last I checked, they were down something like 99% or something you know, disastrous like that over the last decade or so. So the interest in the market has come down dramatically. When you talk with people today, the ones that are talking about how you ought to be in the market, there's a lot of armchair folks who see something at highs, and you, you can't look at their books. You don't know what they're really in or what they're really not, but the volume tells you that you don't have this rush into equities uh, commiserate with the rhetoric. But I have not seen, and this is important, I have not seen the little guy coming out of his pocket buying yet. Now, I don't know that the little guy ever will or not, and that, that's one, one thesis I've got is that when the, when the little guy begins to buy, then that's when you want to sell. But I don't know that we'll see the little guy come back to the market because the little guy doesn't have any money. The velocity of money is so low and there's so little capital out there. I, I don't know the little guy is going to come back in until much higher. I, I mean, it, it might be down 20000 before they start coming back in. Now, in the short term, is there a buying opportunity right now? I don't think so, not yet. I'm on record as saying to the folks in my service that from 16.5 till 17.5, I thought the top would be this year. Well, I thought the top would be 15 to 16.5 last year, and we traded in and around that, and now I think, let's see, the Dow's at 16.5, so it's back down to the bottom of that range for the year. But I'm not, I'm not excited long or short right now, and I don't think sentiment's an indicator yet. Yeah, what happened three years ago, I noticed in the gold market, gold hit 1900 twice, and the way that it fell, it didn't go down in a straight line. There was a choppy downfall in the price of gold. And I think Panama Orange talks about this as well, how he feels that the stock market is going to go down in a choppy manner, but it's not going to go down in a straight line. Do you see it that way too? I mean, like what we saw in 2008, it just went down in a straight line and then we saw that move right back up from Dow 6,500. That is a great question for a number of reasons. I want to talk about precious metals if I can and then come back to the market. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. When, when you look at what happened from 2011 until 2011 midway, from like January to April, silver and gold, or whatever, from, from the lows to the highs of 2011 on precious metals. When, when you got to the top of that move and then they came back down, there's one refrain, which I've heard an awful lot of in the last year now, and that is that silver was at five for 30 years or whatever, and gold was at 250, and that's where we're heading again. So all you stackers, you're just, you're done, you had your chance, and that's it. Now I want you to consider something. That is now the conventional wisdom. Before the ETFs and before the Internet and before about 2010 or 11, there weren't even people talking about silver and gold online. Not really. If you go back and you do a Google trend search for like the term silver stacker, let your mind expand as you see that that term didn't even start getting used until about two or three years ago. All of these things are, are really new. And so the conventional wisdom that, okay, we're getting ready to go into this bear market forever, 
that conventional wisdom is what I think is the wrong idea right now. Everyone, it's just it's just too easy. Okay, we're going 30 years of <clears throat> nowhere in precious metals. That didn't make any sense at all when everybody thinks it. And stackers are worried about it, and the non-stackers are laughing about it. And it's just, hey, we're going in the sideways thing. You had your chance. I don't believe that. Now, when you look at the market, the conventional wisdom is that, well, you know, we had this skyrocketing move, and now we're going to get this hammer fall back to 5,000. Where is Harry Dent, by the way? I mean, this guy with his annual Dow 1000 has kind of disappeared. But a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys are talking about the great cliff dive that's getting ready to begin. And that's too easy. It's just ridiculously too easy. I mean, look, who can't see what the market did in the last decade? So conventional wisdom would say the market's about to peel down about 5,000 points. I mean, I, my target on the Dow is 12,500. If you ask me today what my bottom is on the market. But in the long term, when they begin to raise interest rates, and this is the wild card, there is no chance the market or metals stay down. There'll be an initial panic. You know, people say the punch bowl got taken away and Wall Street doesn't have their, their meth anymore. But once they raise rates, metals in the markets, in my humble, just a guy on internet opinion, are going to skyrocket, which will, by the way, obliterate the idea that it's just going sideways forever on metals, and the people that think we're going to Dow 1000 are going to be proven wrong again. Uh, the conventional wisdom, in other words, Rahul, and all of this, I think, is wrong. I think you have to look at it. If, it, if, it, if it's that easy, okay, it's, it's never the same. I mean, it's, it's never going to be that easy. I think just the opposite. I think any pullbacks on the market to Dow 12 to 13, low for a generation, and I think metals haven't bottomed, but we 50 is not the top on silver. Yeah, speaking of Harry Dent, I think I want to start buying stocks when the mainstream media starts propping him up. Like you said, Dow 12,500. I see it going to roughly 11,700 if you look at the top in 2000. So, I mean, I could explain why I say 11,700, but that's what I'm looking at. So when they promote Harry Dent, that's when I want to start aggressively buying stocks. I don't know if you see it that way, but... Yeah, no, I mean, that, that makes sense that the Harry Dent... Um, if you tell me the media starts bringing those guys out and trumpeting their successes, I agree with you. If you see that, I'm pushing chips in with you. Yeah, that's probably... I'm looking at a 2017 time frame, but we shall see how it goes. Anyways, Don, uh, before I let you go, how can people follow your work again? YouTube.com forward slash day trade show. The thing that I want people to understand is that, you know, if there's a story that you believe in and you philosophically and emotionally believe in it and you want it to be true, if you're part of a group of people, a large group, and they're all on that same story, and the charts tell you the thing that you want to happen if you back up a decade ago has happened, and now everyone around you is feeling it. My example is this. If you told people about silver in 2000 that a decade later it would be up 1,000% because of – and then insert whatever story you wanted to talk about. People in 2000 would have said, wow, you mean I'm going to get 1,000% of my money? But the emotional capital of the story didn't hit until within a month of the top. And so when you reverse that and people talk about deflation, now think about this. Think of all the cats out there. I could go through the litany of names, but you know them. All of these gurus now talking about deflation and lower prices. Now the tide is turning towards that after the move of 65% on silver. And I don't know what the bottom is, but you have to ask yourself, if you believe that story now, who made the money, Rahul, on that story? Was it the people who believed it now? Like if we go out a decade from now, Will the deflation story be magical for those who believe it now or the ones who believed it in 2011? And I'm telling you that the bulk of the money will be made by those who got out or shorted in 2011. If you start coming in now, start piling out and believing the deflation story and all of that, is there more downside? Probably. But ask me where we're going to be a decade from now. And people need to start taking what they believe. This is hard for people to do, Rahul, and applying it to where you were at the top or the bottom that preceded you. So not to be too complicated about it, but if you looked at silver in 2011, take what you believed then. When was it the better story, then or in 2000? Well, in 2000. And if you take the deflation story and the prices are going lower story, since we don't know where the bottom is, I'm not calling that, where do we know that statistically it was a better time to have believed the deflation story and the prices moving lower story? Well, 2011. So I'm just asking people to please begin to think towards the future and don't make your decisions based on how you feel right now. How you feel can be manipulated. And by the way, this is true. How you feel can be manipulated by either the banks, the powers that be, or retailers trying to sell you something. And that's not a winning uh, formula for making money. 
Yep, and all of us have learned the hard way at one point or the other. Yes. Anyways, uh, thanks for coming on, Don, and hope to have you on another time soon. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on, Rahul. Thanks, man.